Hello, welcome back to The Complimentary, a video where I talk about something I love, and today I'm talking about Yotsubato, which is a Japanese manga series by Kiyohiko Azuma, who also did Azumanga Daio, if you're familiar with that. And this is a light story about a young girl who is enjoying life, and about her experiences in just modern day Japan, exploring and just experiencing life. And that might sound really boring, and I thought so too until I started reading it. And Azuma is remarkable in his ability to make the mundane feel precious, where you are experiencing life through, I believe she's five years old, um, a, a five-year-old girl's perspective. She's just pre, uh, she's like pre-kindergarten age. And you get to see just what it's like for her experiencing things for the first time. Uh, and sometimes experiencing things again and getting excited about that. And the joy she feels about life in general without being super saccharine, without being over the top with cuteness. I mean, it is very, very cute. But the point is not for it to be cute for cuteness's sake. It is about what it's like in normal life to just do things and how we take care of things and, and are involved with things. And Azuma is remarkable too in his ability to structure that and tell stories. So seeing, you know, simple images of characters interacting and then we get that one panel focusing in on exactly her expression so you know exactly what she's thinking in that moment and then her reaction to that, it tells you a lot. This is brilliant at presenting characters and expressing them clearly and getting all, this, getting all that across. You also see from this how his art style has changed quite a bit. Now obviously, um, this one is, is more of a painting, whereas this one is more manga style. Um, but his style has evolved somewhat over the course. We're up to volume 13 now in English. There's a bit of a break. And this is one of those titles that I started reading and became it became very precious to me. I love watching how this little girl interacts with her world and her environment. I cherish experiencing life through her eyes. And again, I thought that would be ridiculous. I thought it would be, it would wear on me after a while. But I'm 13 volumes into this and I can't take, I can't get enough of it. It's amazing at that. Now, I noticed I called it um, Yotsubato. That is the technical way you should pronounce it because it is called Yotsuba ampersand, where in Japanese ampersand is to. And the title is Yotsuba To, or Yotsuba And, because it is about Yotsuba and going to the story. Yotsuba and riding a bike for the first time. Yotsuba and experiencing something. Yotsuba and the farm. Which really gets to why this manga feels so different, because it's not trying to tell a big plot. There are some things in here that aren't fully explained. Some things that you'll, you'll read and you're like, huh, I wonder where, the, where he's going with that. But this is not about those things. It is about the experiences of this girl and people around her. Now, it's not always entirely about Yotsuba. Other characters, you know, you spend a little bit of time with other characters and so forth and so on. But um, it is fundamentally about enjoying life. Now, it turns out, apparently, depends on who you listen to, Yotsuba was inspired by the fact that <laughs> Japan has a declining birth rate, and part of that is that a lot of people are, especially a lot of young people in Japan, are kind of scared of having children, and they're intimidated by the idea of, of what it would be like living with a young child. And they don't want to have little kids running around. And so Yotsuba is meant to essentially endear us to the idea of having a little kid in our lives. To say that it is joyous to see the world through 
a young child's eyes. And that, that perspective can be a wonderful addition to your life. Um, but fortunately, it doesn't feel like it is pushing that much. It doesn't feel like it's saying, you should now go out and have a kid. Uh, instead, the theme is, and in fact, the, the thing that all of that every uh, volume ends with is this. Enjoy everything. And that really gets to this. And what's fascinating is not everything in the story is enjoyable, right? She skins her knee at one time. Sometimes she has to be punished. And these are treated as actual things that, you know, you have to go through in life. Actually, you know, this is part of experiencing life and it's not always, you know, 100% happy all the time. But you live with that, and you go through with it, and you come the, to the other side, and you still find ways of enjoying life. Um, oh gosh, I just love Yotsubato, and I'm so glad we're getting more of it. This is one of those stories that just uh, touches me deeply. I, I, am, I, I, I read this thing, and I feel verklempt. I, I feel for Yotsuba. I feel for, for her world and her environment, and I know very soon she's going to start having to go to school and she's not going to be able to go and explore and wander her environment all the time and she's going to have to grow up and i believe at that point like i believe the day she goes off to school this manga will end um and it's the bittersweet thing about this is that we know we're not going to you know that we can't live like this all the time but the, the love of life that a young child can give us is precious and is worth preserving. And that is what Yotubato gives you. It, it gives you that perspective. So, hope this has helped you to understand a little bit of Yotubato. There is no anime adaptation, and the author has said he's not particularly interested in having an anime adaptation. So you're probably not never going to see an anime version of Yotsubato, at least no time soon. Uh, so if you want this, you're going to have to go out and, and get the manga. It's been out for quite some time. And hope you found this useful, and there will be more like this kind of stuff coming in a future episode.